Hey, how's it going everybody? Thank you for clicking on my video. I just want to start off by saying that I am not going to start off with a default cube. I'm going to be using a project template that I always use for these types of um, concepts and artworks. If you want this project template, um, just follow me and DM me on Instagram at ling.fbx and I will send you this project file for free. So yes, I'm going to put a list of add-ons on the screen um, that I'm currently using in Blender. I think this is version 3.6. Um, this template is a basic female character, it's got the topology and it's got the eyes and some procedural eyelashes and eyebrows that we will, I will be using in this video. You're welcome to go onto Sketchfab and download any type of uh, female topology character that you find. It's also important to note that I'm using a reference photo here that I found on Pinterest. I couldn't find the actual artist, so if anyone happens to find the artist, please let me know, I'll happily credit them in the description below. So to start off, I'm going to take my templates and I'm going to put it into x-ray mode and we're going to start posing this character. The character is rigged um, quite simply with Mixamo, so uh, anyone that's used Mixamo before will be familiar with this. I'm not going to be animating this model, so I'm not super concerned with how accurate the rig is. Um, so that is why I use Mixamo and why the handles are so simple. And you'll see that I am just moving the character to the position. I really liked the pose that the reference photo had. And then once I've posed it, I am going to absolutely wreck this model by sculpting it. Um, so you'll see here, I'm just going to fix small things that Mixamo usually messes up, like the uh, armpits, the elbows. The neck looks really messed up here, but that's okay. The next thing that I'm going to do once I'm sort of happy with the way that the character is posed is just shape the mouth and I'm going to do this as well by absolutely wrecking the model. Uh, we're still going to keep that topology so that we can texture paint it later, although there is a default texture paint on the template. Um, then we're going to do the exact same thing with the nose. The nose is a lot smaller in the reference photo and I think that's what makes it look cute. After doing the nose, I'm going to shape the eyes, also just to try and really capture that same expression that she has. And then we're going to model the teeth. I did that just by copying the existing vertices um, and then shaping it according to the reference photo. It's still not perfect and I'm going to have to shape this mouth. First, I'm going to do the ears. Uh, don't forget, once you are happy with the pose, create a pose asset. I don't know why, this is only in the dope sheet, but it is there. And once you've created the pose asset, it'll be in your asset animation library. Next thing we're going to do is replace the eyes. The eyes in the template aren't perfect. I got them off of Blender Kit, and for some reason, whenever I move them with the rig, uh, the texture distorts, so we're going to be replacing them. I'm just going to place them straight on top. And once they're placed in the right position, I'm going to move the pupils to where I want them as well. I'm just going to sculpt the head a little bit here because I see it is still way too big. Um, small heads are also cuter, smaller heads, smaller nose. Here I'm just making some sculpting refinements. And the next thing that I'm going to do is just add some thickness to those teeth. So I'm going to go into the actual teeth, refine them a little bit separate some to make it look like they are layered and then add a bevel modifier just to give them that sort of edge not to make them look too round. Next thing I want to do is add a tongue. I'm going to do this with a simple plane. Really nothing fancy about this tongue. It's just to show that it's there. And then after I've modeled the tongue, I'm just going to give it a really basic shiny red material. The next thing that we're going to do is replace the eyelashes. So the eyelashes are going to come from the Geo folder in the template. I'm going to copy some vertices from our sculpt that we have now and then just replace the array nerves path in the modifier stack with our new vertices that we are using. The next thing I'm going to have a look at is thinning out those eyebrows. Uh, thinner eyebrows also give like a feel of youth, so I thought thinning them out made them look a little bit more realistic and also a little bit cuter. 
after doing that we're gonna start getting ready to do the shirt i did this by copying the uh, the mesh that I already had on the actual body and then just moving around the vertices I wanted like a big loose shirt that we could sculpt some some folds into um, I do want this to be a silk shirt so we're gonna go ahead and do that Alright, sort of happy with the shirt, we're going to move on to the ears, uh, the geometry that I have here on the ears because I pretty much just sculpted it from the original template, the geometry is not great, so sculpting it is not going to be accurate. I did add a multi res here to see if I could get some more geometry to play with and that was sort of good enough for me. Looking back at this video, I think I should have just fixed the, the topography, uh, I mean topology, sorry, so that I could add some more detail into the ears because they really gave a great effect. Now I've gone ahead and added some curves just so that I can add some stitches or lace into the shirt. Um, I do also want to add some stitches into the um, by the shoulders of the shirt to make the shirt look a little bit more realistic. So I went and copied those parts, made a little st stitch object and then arrayed it along that curve. After I did that I went ahead and made a bit of an environment and this is um, a combination of things from blender kits um, and from Polly Haven as well. Um, I like the idea of having her feet in the water. I wasn't too sure what I was going to do with this yet. Um, I played with the depthness of the water to see what the reflection would do. And then I finally got brave enough to tackle the hair. Uh, the hair is quite a challenge. I don't like doing hair the typical way. Um, I use hair net to do my type of hair. So that means you need to create a curve for pretty much every lock of hair. I start off by doing the front bits uh, of the hair, then I go and I do the rest of the top layer of the hair and then lastly I do sort of the, the bottom layer of the hair which has the longest uh, curves. So here I'm still doing the front bits. So I sort of start doing them from the, from the camera view to see where the hairs would match up and then I make sure that they look correct in 3D. Once the curves are done, I go into geometry nodes and just make sure that they all have the same amount of vertices. For some reason, hairnet will not work um, if your curves all have different amounts of vertices on them. Then once I've emitted or applied the hairnet, um, I went into the hair particle settings and I adjusted the size of the hair, trying to play with it, get a twist, or making it look more natural and flowy. I was pretty chuffed with the hair at this point, so then I moved on to the environment again. Um, I really wanted to add some moss onto this tree uh, because I thought it looked quite uncomfortable and hard by itself. So I added a particle system to that and just made some particles, some hair particles for the moss. Next, I thought it would be appropriate to play with the lighting a little bit more. So I added a spotlight coming from the back uh, to sort of add as, act as a rim light and shine on that moss and a, on her hair to highlight those particles. I wanted to frame the composition a little bit more so I added some grass particles in the front of the frame in the foreground.
and then it was time to do the crown. I started off doing this with a plane with the existing geometry, then I decided to just use a curve, so I hid the hair, and I had a look at references of Keyleth from Vox, Machi Vox Machina um, and how her crown was because I essentially thought that this character was going to resemble her and it was going to be a representation of her so I tried to make it look as close as I could to her crown. Then I thought it would be a cool idea to add some fish to the water, some small emissive fish. I got this fish model just from Sketchfab um, I wasn't looking for anything fancy since we weren't really going to be seeing any detail and then I arrayed them along the curve. And lastly, I thought she needed some shoes, um, or maybe even just one shoe on the one foot that's not completely submerged in the water. So I downloaded this model from Sketchfab, which was free. Um, I thought this was a good template just because it was very low poly and then I ended up sculpting it to make it look more like an elf shoe. And that was pretty much it. I did some more changes off camera here and in between like the chain. Um, I don't think I was able to record that but that is the gist of my workflow. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to message me on Instagram.